The last thing I expected to wake up to this morning was a video my friend sent me of Hogwarts Legacy running natively on his MacBook Pro pretty flawlessly. So for those who don't know, Apple just released something called the Game Porting Toolkit, which is basically a set of tools which is designed to help developers of Windows and console games port over their titles uh, to the Metal 3 graphics API and basically to get their games to run on macOS. Um, so basically the idea is that if you had a Windows game and you wanted to figure out whether it would be worth porting to Mac in the first place, but you didn't want to invest too much money actually porting it over, you could try to run it through what Apple calls their emulator, quote unquote, which in reality is just a reskin of Crossover 22, which is probably a very familiar name. It actually did not work with Apple specifically, but Crossover did um, let Apple use some of their code, which basically helps the metal framework that translates to DX9, 10, 11, and 12 directly to metal. And this is really, really cool. You may be thinking, how can I get these games running on my own MacBook? And I have the tutorial for you right now. This is actually not exactly meant for end users per se. It's more meant for developers to kind of test their game, but there are no limitations on how or who can run this. So let's get right into the tutorial. So before we hop right into the install, there are some prerequisites we have to figure out first. So obviously you're going to be on the um, developer beta of macOS Sonoma. Uh, it's free for everyone. You can sign up on the Apple developer page and then you can just download it. Um, you're also going to need the latest version of Xcode 15 beta. So make sure you install that through the Apple developer website. So first off, you're going to need to install Rosetta and then we're going to have to enter an x86 64 bit shell to continue the following steps in this Rosetta environment. Uh, all the following steps should be then run within this shell. So then we're going to have to install the x86 64-bit version of Homebrew if we don't already have it installed on this Mac. Then we're going to have to make sure that the brew command is on our path. If this command does not print out this certain result, then we must modify the path to put this in first or fully specify the path to brew in the next commands. So the homebrew devs thought about this already, and in the terminal you can see under the next steps tab, you can tell that if the preferred path, like the one I have on the bottom of the screen, is not there, you can put those two commands in to change it to that. So instead of typing everything in for subsequent commands, you can actually just have it default to that. Next, we're going to have to tap the Apple homebrew tap, which can be found at the Apple GitHub page. Then we're going to have to install the game porting toolkit formula. This formula downloads and compiles several huge software projects. How long this takes will depend on the speed of your computer. Um, so next we're going to create a new wine prefix for our game porting toolkit environment. A wine prefix contains a virtual C drive. You will install the toolkit and your game into this virtual C drive. A wine configuration window should appear on your screen. Change the version of Windows to Windows 10, choose apply, and then okay to exit the configuration. If the wine configuration window does not appear and no new icon appears on the dock, verify that you have installed the correct version of Homebrew as well as the game-porting-toolkit formula. So before we launch our game, we have to change the registry edit of Windows to a later version to trick the games that the video drivers are new and valid some games require this, some don't, but I recommend doing this no matter what, just so you have a smoother experience across the board. Use these commands to update the registry inside of the wine prefix and just run these inside the terminal. So one of the biggest challenges that I found during this process was trying to figure out how to open the game library launcher through the game porting toolkit library. So I had to find my path of the game porting toolkit as well as where the installer would be in the virtual C drive that the porting toolkit makes. And basically I had to find those two paths, put them together in one command, and then I had to open the, for in this case, Steam setup exe file in that volume. Again, all the command prompts that I used will be in the description. Another problem I experienced was that once I did open the Steam setup exe, I was able to go through the install process and then I just got faced with a blank screen. The only solution as of right now is to just close out of the window and relaunch it again through the terminal. The only difference though, when I open it this time, is that I don't do the Steam setup, I actually just do the Steam EXE. 
So be sure to go back into your path and then select the steam.exe instead of just the setup file. So there you have it. That is how you can play any game that you want on macOS. Obviously there are some limitations with anti-cheat games or certain launchers, but right now Steam and Blizzard work very, very well. As you can see in the gameplay on screen, Rocket League and Astroneer both play really, really well. I appreciate you guys watching this tutorial. Hopefully I could help you guys play video games on your Mac device. Be sure to check out the description for a very detailed tutorial following the steps that I did on screen and have a good rest of your day. Peace out.